Hey guys, CJ with Elevated Systems, and I, I've been messing around with framework projects for a while now, and a question that keeps popping up is, can't you throw on a bigger CPU cooler to keep things cooler, quieter, and faster? Well, that's not as simple as it sounds. You can't just yank off the framework cooler and slap on any old CPU cooler. There's three big roadblocks here. First off, there's no mounting points for a standard CPU cooler. Second, the mobile CPU is an open die without an integrated heat spreader. If you just slap a cooler on it without thinking, you could possibly damage it. It is pretty much a crystal after all. And last but not least, a regular CPU cooler just won't squeeze in there. The RAM on one side and this inductor on the other prevent the cooler from making contact with the CPU. Now, for the last two issues, I could just install an IHS on the CPU. I've measured it out and I've even got a design ready. If I had a few thousand bucks to throw at an end mill, I could cut it from a chunk of copper, but since I don't, today's mission is to work with what we've got to tackle these issues and hook up this knock to a cooler to the framework mainboard, and most importantly, test it out to see if it actually makes any difference. I'm gonna take this step by step. First off, I think I'll use the framework cooler as the IHS and mount the new cooler on top of it. This will keep the CPU safe and give the height needed to clear the RAM and VRM. But before that, I need to figure out how to attach the cooler to the mainboard. My plan is to whip up a back plate that's a bit wider than the main board and then create a couple of longer brackets to connect the cooler and screw it onto the back plate. It's kind of like how the cooler attaches to a normal Intel or Ryzen motherboard, except instead of bolting through the board, we're bolting around it. So that's a game plan. Let's do this. Here is the idea. I have a sheet of 22 gauge steel. This is going to be what I construct the back plate from. And then I have a bar of aluminum. And this is going to screw to the Noctua cooler. I took off the Noctua mounting brackets here and I'm going to fabricate brackets out of this aluminum and it will attach to the back plate. That's the plan. I think I'm gonna start with the brackets so I have a good idea of what width I need for the back plate. And I'm going to use this piece of paper as a template. All right, now that I got a paper template done here, let's go ahead and we do some minor adjustments, but now that I know the, the sizing and spacing, I can go ahead and transfer this and make the metal back plate.
22 gauge steel is pretty solid, but I'm going to give it a little extra strength by bending the edges in. And because it's such a thick steel, I should give me kind of a rolled edge. Now, take our back plate and add some thermal pad. This is just for, this is more for electrical insulation than it is for heat dissipation, but it works. So, all right guys, apologize, my camera died. That's what happens when I record for hours on end here. But what essentially you missed was I test fit it all together here. And it fit. We can add our little thumb screws. Nice tight fit all the way right where it's supposed to do. Now what I'm doing is prepare that, those heat pipes and get rid of this black finish on there. So we got a nice clean, flat copper surface. So I've actually already taken this off here. So what I'm gonna do is starting with 400, 1,000, 1,500, we're gonna lap all this black off of this heat pipes here, get it to a nice flat surface. So my cooler will make a nice contact with that. Okay, I got the initial modification and fabrication done. I think it's time for assembly. I'm using a Noctua NTH1 thermal paste today. Now, because I got lots of nooks and crannies to fill in here, I'm gonna go pretty thick on the thermal paste. All right, and I'm just putting this on hand tight because I don't want to jam this down into that, into those heat pipes and crush that CPU. Okay, now with our extra cooler in place, we're faced with a fourth hurdle. The default fan is a five volt one while Noctua, along with pretty much every other CPU cooler fan out there, clocks in at 12 volts. This means I can't simply splice it into the motherboard. 
To address this gracefully, I've got this nifty thermally controlled PWM fan controller board at my disposal, but setting it up correctly does call for some tinkering, pinpointing the prime probe location, doing some math for temperature offsets. So since today is all about putting our CPU through the ringer, I'm just going to take a shortcut and plug it into a 12 volt SATA power source. And let that fan spin up to 100%. All right, let's get this tested. Naked board run three, 4836. So my initial impressions are pretty good. The Noctua is doing such a good job that the framework fan isn't even spinning up because we have a package temperature of 29 degrees Celsius at idle. So let's go ahead and stress this out and see what happens. Okay, we're about a minute and a half into the run and the CPU fan has spun up, but we only have a package temperature of max of 59 degrees so far. And we're into uh, almost a complete pass on Cinebench R23. So this should work out really well. All right, we finished. Now, overall, our score didn't boost that much. I think without the cooler, we had a high of uh, 48.36. This came to 50.82, but the big improvement is... We had a max package temperature of just 64 degrees Celsius with an average during the run of just 57 degrees Celsius. Now I'm going to go ahead. I'm just going to see what happens if I disconnect the system fan and just let the Noctua cool this thing. So the heat pipes are barely moving any heat all the way to the end. This is usually 150 degrees Fahrenheit, even when the fan is running. All right, we're almost at the end of the run with just the Noctua running. We've maxed out our temperature at 66 degrees Celsius, and it looks like we got a 5038. So with our score was pretty much exactly the same. So I want to try one more thing here. Okay, final run. What I've done is there's no... The CPU fan's not connected, and the Noctua I have the uh, low noise adapter connected. I think it cuts it by 33%. And again, idle, we're hovering at the 34 degree mark. So let's do a final run here and see what we get. All right, here we are, coming to the end of the run. Our max tap only went up 68 degrees with the fan at under 70%. And it looks like our score actually, what, went up by 50 points? I mean, not bad, not bad at all. But this is the 11th Gen 1135G7. So this is the lowest end board that Framework puts out. So I want to try this setup on my 12th Gen board. Let's see how that works out. So our... 1260p board running no fan connected no system fan connected we got the low noise adapter on the noctua cooler and we maxed out at 83 degrees celsius we're running at pretty much a steady oh there we go 94 26 i'm pretty sure that's the highest cinebench r23 score i've ever seen on this board without a battery attached and again, we had an average temp across that entire 10 minute test of just 59 degrees Celsius, maxing out at 83 degrees. Total max package power was about 55 watts, total board power 80 watts. So right at the high performance thresholds. All right guys, to be honest, the outcomes generally exceeded my initial expectations. If you're not already in a know, Heat pipes excel in the task of heat displacement. In our case, shuttling the heat from the CPU on one end over to the heat sink on the other. 
there was a moment of doubt regarding how effectively this transfer would carry through to our Noctua cooler. In fact, I was all set to nip off the ends of the heat pipes and fill the void with solder, essentially forging a solid heat spreader. But that step is really not necessary. This setup works wonders and is compatible with almost any Noctua cooler out there, which is precisely why I opted for Noctua in the first place. Sure, you could argue about the price to performance ratio of these coolers, yet it's hard to deny that they rank among the best, but the real reason for the selection, almost every Noctua cooler from generation back shares the same mounting system, which means I could use virtually any Noctua cooler with the custom mounting system I've cooked up. Sadly, the NHP one doesn't fit the bill, but I reckon a fanless NHD 15 could feasibly passively cool the framework with a bit of power management fine tuning. The fact that some of the standard mounting hardware came into play here was a bonus and added to the simplicity of the project. From this point, I can rework some of the parts of my framework motherboard and graphics card enclosure project to accommodate a taller cooler. Considering the stellar performance of the 65 millimeter Noctua, I'm planning to run some tests using the slimmer NHL9. If the temperature holds up well, that's what we'll be going with. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss the final project. In the long run, I might have the IHS I designed brought to life, but this solution is something anyone with a basic toolkit can pull off. I use 22 gauge steel for the backplate, but you could fashion this from practically anything. My advice, try six to eight millimeter acrylic. It's a breeze to work with. You'll find links to the blueprints for this project in the CAD files for the IHS I designed in the description below. Do note that the IHS is designed based on the 1165G7, so you might need to tweak it for other CPUs. Finally, let me know your thoughts on this more relaxed format. I'd really appreciate your input. And hey, if you want to dive deep into the mostly uncut version of this entire project, head over to my Patreon page. It's the generous support from my patrons that enable me to embark on these projects. And the more backing I receive, the more I can too. But don't sweat it if you're not up for that. A simple like and a comment down below goes a long way too. Now, listen up, I'll be taking a few weeks off to have some well-deserved summer fun and quality time with the family, but fear not, I'll be back with the final rendition of this enclosure, so make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on that, and I'll catch you in the next one.